Hey everybody, welcome to Go Bold. My name is Jody Atariwala and I'm your host. And I'm coming to you today from North Vancouver in cloudy and wet British Columbia. And I am here visiting C-SPAN Shipyards, one of the three shipyards that are part of the Tier 1 portion of the National Shipbuilding Strategy in Canada. And I'm here to visit a number of the ships that C-SPAN is producing under the National Shipbuilding Strategy. Uh, primarily, the first joint support ship, which will be the future HMCS protector, and a number of other ships. So welcome everybody to Go Bold, and I hope you enjoy this episode. from the bridge of the future HMCS Protector, which will be in service with the Royal Canadian Navy. And I'm joined today by Callum Voss. Callum, thank you so much for joining me. Lovely to be on board this ship. Uh, you are the delivery director for JSS. Correct. Tell me what that means. So my day job is responsibility for overall production, commissioning, and eventually delivery to the Royal Canadian Navy once we have completed all our sea trials. Right on, so that's a very important job. So you're kind of responsible for this, getting the ship ready for delivery to the Navy. Yes. Brilliant, so in December 2024, uh, C-SPAN launched the first joint support ship, the ship that we're standing on now, Correct. the future HMCS protector. So it's in the water. It looks like a Navy ship. Uh, you know, there's still quite a bit of work to do. Um, whereabouts are we in the whole overall build of JSS-1, the future HMCS protector? So the launch was a massive milestone for us here at C-SPAN, one of the biggest we've done so far under the national shipbuilding strategy. That really kickstarts our uh, final outfit and commissioning phase. So through 2025, we'll be bringing switchboards live, we'll be running generators and engines for the first time, and we'll be pushing towards going to sea to conduct our contractor sea trials uh, later in 2025. Lovely. So for those that aren't familiar with what a support ship does, perhaps you could give me a little bit of, um, uh, I guess, context and insight into the capabilities that this ship will deliver to the, uh, to the Canadian Navy. So the future HMCS protector will conduct combat, non-combat and humanitarian aid missions for both Canada and its allies. It has a multitude of um, aviation capability. We can house and maintain two Sikorsky CH-148 Cyclones. We have a huge medical facility on board with a trauma surgery, a dental bay, and two ICU wards to name but a few. And obviously the main piece of this ship is conducting replenishment at sea for other Canadian assets and its allies, whether that be fuel, food, water, ammunition, or spare parts. Right. So in terms of like capacity for this ship, it's a very, very large ship. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Callum, but I believe this is the largest ship that has ever been built in Canada? So this is the largest naval ship ever built and launched in Canada with a range of over 10,000 nautical miles and it can hold over 6,500 tonnes of F-76 fuel and another thousand of F-44 aviation fuel. Fantastic. So it'll be able to support, obviously, the Cyclone helicopters. It'll be able to support Allied Forces yep. helicopters that come and replenish. Um, we're going to take a look at some of the other spaces on board this ship, but uh, some of the other notable parts, I believe, are like the hospital. Yes. Um, and uh, obviously the accommodations. I, I don't know. That we're kind of in an interesting time, Callum, in terms of what sailors these days are expecting versus what the Navy also needs, you know, in terms of, uh, of um, habitability. Yep. Um, what can you share about that when it comes to the future uh, HMCS protector? I mean, for this specific vessel, it will, be, it will have the ability to have over nearly 239 sailors on board and a variety of different cabin configurations from messes all the way up to officer cabins. We then have other facilities on board. There'll be a gym, a barber shop, etc. 
um, for all, providing all the needs of the sailors as they go about living their everyday life. Fantastic, fantastic. So, um, in in terms of like the the systems that are fitted aboard this ship. So right now we're standing on the bridge, we're looking out the window, and we can see one of the uh, king posts. Uh, and right now there isn't the replenishment gear on board yes. yet, but yes. that that is to come. Um, so yeah, the main the main role for this ship is a replenishment ship. Yep. To deliver fuel supplies. Yep. Um, but it can carry uh, ISO containers. Yes. And you'll have large cranes. Yep. Um, ammunition, I yes. guess, as well. So, yes. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting capability here, but it's it's not all from C-SPAN, right? Like, I mean, you guys no. are bringing in yeah. um, a supply chain from across the country. Yeah. So we have a Pan Canada supply chain that supports us from coast to coast. Whether it's through Hepburn and the RAS capability, whether it's through L3 with the IPMS system, or whether it's through Talis and Lockheed providing some of the combat uh, management system and, and communication systems on board. So we have a, a wide number of partners across Canada that provide both design and uh, equipment support to us. Fantastic. So let me ask you something from a personal perspective. Um, you are obviously from Scotland. Um, what attracted you to work here at C-SPAN? And you, you mentioned to me that you've previously worked with BAE Systems. So how do you compare and contrast the two? Like, I mean, obviously, I'm sure you're proud to work for both. Yeah. Um, BAE Systems has a long history in building ships. You know, the National Shipbuilding Strategy in Canada is relatively new and it's trying to build up a capability which clearly is is yeah. working um, but yeah i'd love to love to know kind of just your personal reflections on the differences or similarities for that matter i mean for me i love building ships so getting the opportunity to experience that in a different country and a different continent and a and a different culture was extremely interesting for me I think living in a unique place like North Vancouver where my wife and my sons is a unique opportunity we didn't want to pass up. In terms of the process of shipbuilding, they're largely the same throughout the world. For me, the opportunity to help and make a difference here at C-SPAN was a major factor in, in coming here. Oh, fantastic. Well, I, I, I hope this has been a wonderful experience for you. I'm sure you will see this build through uh, to delivery. Um, and speaking of, so what are some of the next major milestones that we should be looking at? Um, like, I mean, I'm not pinning you down on specifics, but just generally speaking, what's the next milestone? So the next milestones for us are, are making our main switchboards live. We'll be bringing power onto those this year. We'll then be running through later in the summer to run our main generators for the first time, and thereafter our main engines for running our propulsion systems, culminating with the sea trials at the end of this year. Right, and so then that is uh, contractor sea trials, right? So C-SPAN will do sea trials, Correct. and then... Um, and then is it a handover to the Navy, or is it, uh, um, I'm just trying to understand the, the, the uh, timeline here. Um, do you hand it over to the Navy and then they do Navy trials, or do, does the Navy take acceptance and then do their trials? So we, in reality, we do a bit of both. There's certain contract requirements that C-SPAN must prove um, when we do our sea trials. The Navy will then do their own trials post acceptance. And actually, it's a transition phase where our industry and the Navy and their partners all work together to ensure the Navy have the capability that they need. Fantastic. Callum, thank you so much for taking the time to speak yeah. with me. Been Thanks a great, for coming. Yeah, thank you. Been a great pleasure to meet you and lovely to see the ship. It's coming along quite well. Yeah. Thanks, Jody. Awesome. Thank you, my friend. Okay. Thank you. So what you're seeing there is JSS-2 the second JSS ship that is under construction and you see some large blocks there, um, perhaps mega blocks, that are being constructed here at Vancouver shipyards. So this is the bridge of HMCS Protector. As you can see we've got a good view over the king post here and standing behind me and around me in some of these boxes are all the bridge and CMS consoles that will install throughout 2025. So, uh, yeah, so these are going to be the bridge consoles and uh, and CMS. Yeah, uh, bridge, nav, 
bridge navigation and CMS consoles, right. and then obviously some for uh, communications purposes too. Right. And so this this actually is. Um, how would you compare this bridge to others, Kellum, in the sense that, um, you know, for a replenishment ship, you need to have good visibility to to, uh, to form up with other ships? Yeah. I mean, all ships have unique design features on their bridges, but this one's pretty generous in terms of the natural light that, that comes in, uh, and obviously the two bridge wings that will be used for manoeuvring uh, in and out of port. Right, right, right on. Awesome. So, uh, where is our next stop? Where are we so going we are going to see the emergency diesel generator and emergency switchboard. We'll then go to the RAS control room, and then we'll finish up in the hangar where we can look at where the two helicopters will be housed. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Two seconds and we'll, we're going to leave some stuff okay. over here. So this is the emergency diesel generator compartment where we have the emergency diesel generator on my left, capable of one megawatt of power, and the emergency switchboard on my right-hand side here. This will be permanently live as the ship's operating, and this emergency generator is the same capacity as our four, four main diesel generators here. So here we are in the starboard RAS operating room, and at this console here is where the RAS operations will primarily be conducted for GSS. We also have a mirror image of this compartment, on the port side, depending on the operations of the ship. For access to the main magazines, there's four deep magazines here below us with a main scissor lift for lifting up ammunition to the main deck level. Awesome, cool. Oh. So behind me is the main flight deck of GSS-1. This is where they'll land helicopters onto the helo assist tracks and the tracks will pull them in here to the hangar where they can be cleaned, maintained and prepared for future missions. And talk to me about the hangar, if you don't mind, Callum. Um, the, there's, this is meant to house two helicopters yeah. simultaneously. So in here we can house two Sikorsky CH-148 Cyclone helicopters and also up above us there's gantry cranes for maintenance, there's workshops around the perimeter of the hangar and then we also have a torpedo magazine for any requirements for the helicopters. So Callum, uh, we are in the hangar right now of JSS-1 the future HMCS protector. These ships are based on the German Berlin class as a parent design. Um, how different are these Canadian ships from the German design? So whilst the base design for GSS-1 is based on the Berlin class, everything else inside the basic hull form is different. Different helicopter assist tracks, different systems, different IPMS. So in terms of that regard, it's a completely changed chip inside. Interesting. So, but obviously it's based on, on that design because it's a proven design. So Canada is essentially modifying it for their purposes, um, but with some assurance that the class will do what it's meant to do. Yeah, correct. So the base design is based on Berlin class, but the Royal Canadian Navy have specific capability requirements that they want in this vessel, and that's what we've been adding on here at C-SPAN for. Brilliant. Thank you, Kellen. Thank you.